What is going on everyone? Design Academy here and this is Tutorial Tim. We're going to be talking about how to build out the top app bar component variants. So we'll have two of these in to be specific and if we go ahead and click on the exercise file here we have the access to the documentation if you open that link and once you open that link and you'll notice that I'm already there and what this is used for is providing content and actions related to the current screen and also a great moment for utilizing your branding, screen titles, navigation, and actions, which can then transform into a contextual action bar, which is just another set of actions um, based on what you're interacting on in that screen. And there's two types of app bars we're gonna be creating. And we're not gonna be building these from scratch, we're actually gonna reference what we've already created, which are the bottom app bar buttons. And we can go ahead and in this exercise file, if you save it, you can go ahead and pu I've published this already. And if you grab this exercise file, you'll have it to enable the material design system library once more. And once you have that enabled, we can go ahead and just search for app bars and we have all the app bars. So we can go ahead and be a little more specific about what type of app bar we need. We clearly need the bottom app bar with no floating action buttons. And now that we have this, we have all the proper color styles. This, this puts us ahead. I'm just gonna detach this style. I've detached this instance, my apologies. I attached it from the main component. And what we have is a great starting point. And we have the page title here and we got all the specs so this menu is set to 24 pixels on the left the height of this is set to 56 and you'll notice that there's also this little top portion what this is referencing is the system ui bar and we won't need to design for that that is solely a placeholder in this screenshot so when we when engineers actually build this out these components will just be snapped to the top uh, just below the system UI bar, so ignore that, which is why the specs are specified here to 56 and not taking into consideration the height of the system UI bar, just for some context there. And we got three icons here. Got that more vertical icon, the search icon, and this uh, share icon, I believe it is, the title, this, the page title, and then we got the menu icon. So I can go ahead and delete that fourth icon because we're not gonna need it. Yeah, I'm gonna rename this so I don't get confused because this is another set of app bars, but instead of being on the bottom, it's on the top, and we're creating the regular. We're just gonna label this regular. As we already know, this is the regular top app bar. And with that being said, we need to go ahead and grab the, prop, the page style, understand what text style that's using, and we're gonna just type in page Oops, excuse me, page title, add the proper style. So if I go ahead and select headers, we have a variation of headers and subtitles. Um, and we probably gonna have to reference the documentation. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the fill, apply the on primary content color, ensure that the, the resizing is set to auto width there and vertically align that to the canvas. Um, I don't have the right color style or font style, so I'm gonna reference the documentation to find that exact um, font size of the typography here to gain a gen get a general idea of what that is. You'll notice if you pay close attention is that this typography is smaller and in this extended top app bar variant, it is a little bigger. So with that being said, we need to do some snooping and there we have it. We have our category. The font size is set to H6 in that scenario. Uh, we have the typography referenced again, stating that it's set to H6, H6 right there. There's a bunch of examples. Um, it's again giving us the example of the H6. So that is very important. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and just, we already have this as a color style, so we can go ahead and just select that. Go to our textiles and select H6. So we have our H6 here. I'm gonna go ahead and center this. And this is set to 30 pixels to the left of this menu bar icon. So now that's set to 32. And 
we have it set to 16 on the left. I believe it's set to 24 currently. So I'm gonna shift click on the text and the, I'm gonna click on this, shift click on the menu icon, move this over one. I have my nudge amount and my preferences set to eight on the small nudge and one on the big nudge. So I can just quickly move things by increments of eight efficient, effectively as those are the measurement principles of this material design system. So now I have that page title set right here. And I'm just gonna focus on the alignment here, make sure that padding to the right set to 16 and the spacing between the icons is 24, which it is. So if I go ahead and check that set to 24 and I select these, it's set to 16 on the right, the padding. Um, the constraints are good to go. I can go ahead and apply the proper constraints to this typography by setting the vertical axis to center. And this icon already has left and center. So we're good to go. So if I were to scale this, it would all maintain its position uh, as the height increases. It would maintain that position on the Y axis. So we have this variant built out. The only thing missing are the proper icons, which you can go ahead and add yourself. I'm gonna pause this and add them. So I've identified all the proper icons and I was missing one icon. It was the share icon, which falls under the actions category. So I just went to the material design icons tool, typed in share and I found it and I clicked on it, saved it as an SVG. I saved you that step by just giving that to you in the exercise files. So you can drag that into your canvas and Figma and publish it to your material design system library, which is exactly what I did. I just published it, added it here, made it a main component, published it. And once I published it, I was a, I, since I have that library enabled in this exercise file, I was able to pull it from the assets panel here. And then I just swapped those accordingly. So now that all those specs are good to go, you could double check the spacing and whatnot if you needed to and ensure the constraints are set properly. And now we can go ahead and just check our layer and it's labeled correctly. And I'm gonna make this a main component so now that this is a, whoops, I'm gonna select the top parent frame and make that a main component. We now have our main component. And once that's there, we can go ahead and even duplicate this. And with that duplicated, I'm gonna detach it and we're gonna specify the height of this element to be set to 128. But before I do that, I'm gonna intentionally set some constraints so the constraints are gonna be applied to all the icons. So I'm gonna command click on all these icons, which allows you to click these individually and maintain selection of the previous icons. So I have all these selected and I'm gonna set this to top because I don't want these to move when I set the height. And what I'm gonna do is set this to bottom and I'm gonna shift click on this constraint to remove it and make sure that text is set to bottom. So what's gonna happen is that when I change the height of this element, the icon will stick to the top and the text will stick to the bottom. So I'm gonna change the height to 128 and it did exactly that. So now that that has been created, what I wanna do is ensure that the baseline spacing is set accordingly. Um, and you can see that they're specifying the baseline of the text, which is different from the bounding box of the text. It's set to 28 pixels and we can easily do that by hitting shift R, adding a red line to the baseline of the typography and holding, we can hold down option here. We can click the text, it's set to 16 here, but if we go ahead and create a text box, we'll notice that the height of this is set to 21. So what we also need to ensure is that we're using the right text style for this extended top app bar. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and reference our documentation on the top app bar. And we'll notice that the typography just referenced that this was an H6. Um, if we scroll down some more, this headline is an H6. But what about the extended top app bar? It's different. It's a different font. So we can go ahead and Google top app bar text size. So we can go ahead and continue to figure out what the size of the typography is by just Google searching if you're ever confused. But if not, 
Actually, I'm going to open that page up again. Once that's open, we might want to be able to access the developer guidelines and kind of snoop around there. And it'll give us access to the code. But what we want is access to this here and understanding the typography. So the text appearance. And we're just reading some properties here. And what we really want to do is understand the text style being applied. So I'm going to pause this and look for that value. So I was not able to identify the actual title by, by snooping through this typography, or at least the print, the code here. Don't get confused. Um, again, this practice I just went through, this little exercise of searching for a specific attribute is a a uh, common practice I'd recommend for you to start understanding because it will really help you try to dissect and understand how to uh, identify certain elements of a design by going through different sets of documentation, which is a great skill to have and will improve your implementation of design as you can better articulate it to developers as well as you continue to dive deeper into these types of Google searches and trying to understand how it's implemented. So I kind of just reference the developer documentation and access that component page where it talks about top app bars. And I'm kind of looking through the structure of this code. So Android's written in this format called XML. That's the, the, the language in which they write their, um, they write their code or for the UI, implementing, implementing their UI. And I'm looking at the prominent top app bar and with that prominent top app bar I'm going and scrolling down and I had found a set of properties that were uh, communicated and it talks about the title attributes that they use so I went ahead and was looking for the top app bar anything related to the top app bar attribute to see if I could then identify the size. So there's a bunch of other settings here as well that are communicated, but specifically we're looking for the type title attributes. So it utilizes a title and the material toolbar title is set to an H6, which we've specified. And then the material subtitle is set to uh, subtitle one. And they also have a collapse title variant and then they also have an expanded title, um, as you can see here. But we're going to go ahead and just maintain the title we currently have. Um, again, if you know what that style is, do please do go ahead and refine that. So I'm going to go ahead and just I'm going to change that to subtitle since that is the what I was trying to identify. And if we go ahead and ensure that the baseline set to 28, we should be good to go. So I'm going to increase this rectangle to 28 pixels, push this slightly up. So the baseline is aligned now. So when I do my red lines, the baseline of the typography is now 28 pixels away from the bottom, which is what is specified in the extended top app bar right here, 28 pixels, this green horizontal line. So now we are good to go. And all of the spacing is correct already on, on the icons above. Uh, and we just set constraints so that it would stay that way. So with that page title set there, I'm going to make sure that the constraint set to left as well. So when we type in a new title, we are good to go. And with that said, I'm just going to ensure that my spacing is set to on the left is set accordingly. So it's set to 72. We're good to go. And we're going to go ahead and name this um, extended because it's our extended top app bar variant. And now that all the constraints are set and we're good to go, um, I'm going to go ahead and make this a main component. And uh, you can go ahead and organize this in this frame. And that is how we build out the top app bar components. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.